Hello, everyone. Today we are going to talk how you can actually use URA to convert it and save it to uh, Firestore Storage. So it could be any file. Uh, in my case, I'm using an image, but I can actually show you uh, how you can use any type of file like PDF or whatever you want to. Uh, and this technique, uh, in my case, actually I'm showing this demo using entering a new array in a form and then uh, pressing a button and this will upload it to Firebase storage. But you can, of course, uh, use it as an action output or wherever you want or wherever your preference is. And most of the time, it will be action output. So you get like a new array of a file and you want this file to, to store it uh, in Firebase. So, so let me show you a working demo and then I will show you how this actually uh, works and uh, how I managed to do it. Okay, great. So let me show you how this works. This is my page. It's a very simple page. I have very simple text uh, fields, inputs, and then uh, I have a button, which when I press, it will actually store the file uh, to Firebase Storage. And I'm using test mode, as you can see over here. Actually, uh, Andrew from Flutterflow uh, team uh, made a great job uh, refactoring and uh, uh, redesigning uh, Flutterflow, so it's getting better and better every time. And I really like actually this uh, bread comp like menu over here, so you can see the actual name of the project, uh, the what mode you are, test mode or run mode, and then uh, you can go to the dashboard from here. So I really like that actually. It's a small improvements, but I really like them because previously there was no way to know if you are in the test mode or uh, run mode. Uh, so yeah, that's great. And then uh, let's go back to the actual uh, demo. Uh, I have an image in my case. I have an image here. Uh, and this is the image. It's actually mid-journey generated image. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, PP Longstrop Posvenska or in Swedish. Uh, and I think in English it's called PP uh, Long Socks or something like that. Uh, it's very famous uh, child book uh, for about a girl uh, with uh, red hair and she's riding a horse. So I just made uh, I just made this image with uh, Mid Journey and I said PP riding a horse in Stockholm and then I I, I uh, this is the output or this is the result uh, that I got. Okay, great. And then this is the image. This is uh, the actual uh, URA to the image. And when I press this button, it will actually load for a bit. And then when I uh, go to Firebase, uh, and I need to refresh because this is not dynamic, this is not a real-time database, you need to refresh it. And then when I refresh it, you can actually see the image being uploaded with the uh, date and the time uh, that I uploaded. This is the name uh, of the file. But of course, you can name it every, uh, anything that you want to. And when I press uh, on it, you can see the actual image being uploaded. Great. And now let me show you how you can do the same thing uh, with a sample uh, PDF. Uh, so I'm using uh, always the same sample PDF, which is this one. Uh, and if you write in Google sample PDF uh, or Bing or any uh, search engine that you use, uh, this is uh, probably the one that will show up in the first place. So let me go this live demo. Let's see, I tested it before, so it should work. Uh, this is a URA to the PDF. I click uh, save and then go back here and Firebase refresh, and then I should be able to see uh, the PDF being uploaded. And indeed it is. If I click over here, and uh, this is the actual PDF that is being uploaded. And you can see the size looks okay. Uh, the file type PDF, the day that is being uploaded. So everything looks great. So this was the actual demo. And now let's go and see how I managed to build it. Okay, great. So before I show you how this is built, 
Uh, there are two things that you have to think about it and you have to make sure that you set up the right way. Uh, I'm always saying that. Uh, so before you use the code and before you test the code, make sure that you have a logged in user. So make sure you have a logged in user because we are actually using the uh, path. So when we are storing the files, we're storing inside users and then the user ID and in my case, I have a, I have a folder called files, and I'm storing them there. If we don't we if we don't have the login user, we cannot not get the UID of the user. And of course, you can change that, and you can upload to any file in Firebase. But you have to change the rules. You have to go to settings, Firebase, and there are if settings in uh, the flow. I mean, and there are the rules of Firebase, which uh, you have to actually change. And if you go to uh, your uh, if you go to your Firebase uh, rules, those are actually the rules, and those are the same rules in Flow as well. So you can see actually uh, you can upload files inside users, and then the user ID. This is the folder that you can upload files to if you like i said if you want to change this folder you have to change your rules yeah and uh, because we are actually sticking with the default rules that's why we are uh need to have a logged in user and then the second thing is that create a fake upload to firebase button and the reason for that is that we need to have the code which is the actual code to upload the file in, Fire, uh, in uh, Firebase. And to do that, it's very simple. Uh, I have a fake upload page, which I have only one button and a single button. The action for this single button is just upload file to Firebase and then upload side Firebase and then let's say PDF. It, the, the type doesn't really matter. And if you have this action set up, the code to upload to Firebase will be automatically uh, uploaded or up, uh, uh, automatically uh, uh, intended or applied in Flutterflow. Sorry about that. And then you can actually use it. Uh, so this is the code that we are using. It. Great. And then uh, let me show let me show you uh, the actual page that I have set up. So the page, like I said, only have a text field, which is upload, uh, which is sorry, URA. Uh, to uh, to file that you want to upload, and then the actual custom action. And also custom action, it's called save file from URA, uh, and you have one argument which is the actual URL. Uh, and um, this can, uh, like I said, this can uh, come from another action. So you could in theory have uh, like an API action, and then you can use. So let me just show you real quickly what I mean. For example, if you have an API action, and let's say I have this action, for example, uh, and I have the output from it. So let's say my my file URA, you're outputting a file URA uh, from this action, and then you can have another action, which would be the custom action to save the file from the URA, and you're getting you get the file. Uh, from the action output and then the URA. And then if it's a JSON, of course, uh, you have to fill the right JSON. So it's if it's a, that URA, you have to do it this way, right? So this is just a simple way you can use it with actions, uh, with action output. But here I'm using it as a form. Uh, so when uh, the URA is filled and then press this button, it fires the custom code. And the custom code is very simple custom code. I'm using actually uh, an API call uh, and authentication user uh, the storage uh, database. And the API call is actually the, the little bit uh, tricky. And the reason for that is that uh, to avoid the cross origins errors, you need to you to use it with an API code. So I actually set up a very simple API code, which is download file, and then did, I have only the URA uh, like that with brackets, and it's a get request and the variable, 
is actually the UR, uh, URA as a string. And I, I put a default uh, URA here. And then when I go to uh, Fire, uh, to Flutter Flow, sorry, page, uh, and I want to use this um, uh, API code, uh, I can actually use it anywhere in the page. For example, in the title, let's say in the title, and I'm clicking on over here and I say API call download file. I don't need this part uh, of the action. I will just delete it. And the reason for that is just I want to actually see what is the naming in Flutterflow to actually use it. So if I click on the code and then click where I add it, uh, this is actually uh, the call. Uh, or this is the API code that I have to copy. But actually, I forgot to put the variable. So I have to put the variable, of course, which is the URA. And let's say I put some demo URL. Uh, so let's go back to the code, click on the title, and this is the actual API. So this way, we can actually use API codes inside our custom code. Which is great thing if you haven't, uh, if you didn't know that, uh, this is actually a good uh, lesson or good tutorial about that as well. So we can delete it now. We only needed to see uh, the actual code and uh, the backend uh, that we needed to uh, that we need to add is the backend uh, that that slash that that slash backend API request uh, slash API calls. And then when we add this, we now can use our uh, API uh, calls. All the API calls actually in Flutterflow, we can use them in our custom code. And because I already uh, added that, you can see actually it's the same API code. But if your code is something else, uh, then you have to add it or change it. Uh, and then uh, because we're using the source code, so how you know that we how you can know that we're using the source code to flow the flow you know it because we have the dot dot slash dot dot slash uh uh before uh, of the or or the for, yeah before the actual path and that means that we're using the flow the flow source code and then we because of that we need to exclude it from compilation it's very important or else it will not compile the code will not compile even if that you don't have any errors over here the code will not compile. So make sure that this you excluded from compilation. And then let me go through the actual code. So we need to add uh, one argument, which is the URA uh, that we are going to take it, uh, the link, and then upload it to Firebase. And then we need to actually get uh, the URA itself and to, to place a safety, a no safety check. Because if you, if you have a no here, it will actually blow up your application. If you pass a no URA, it will blow up the application. And this is my image. I put it as a, a safe, uh, as a default uh, backup. And then the first thing here, the, the first thing uh, to the actual code is that we're getting the extension. So we're getting the file extension, so you don't have to worry about it. If you're uploading PDF, it will get the file extension and place it as a PDF. If you're uploading a PNG, it will be uploaded as PNG or JPEG or whatever file extension that you are uploading. It will just get it from here, so you don't have to worry about it. And as always, I'm doing it. Uh, I'm getting uh, the uh, file. Uh, I'm putting the file name uh, as the date. So I'm getting the year, month, uh, date, uh, hour, minute, and seconds. Uh, and then we're combining the two. So we're combining the, uh, the name of the file plus the extension. And this will give us the file name. And the last part is we're getting the directory. Uh, which is users and then current user ID. And this is coming from this part, which is the uh, out Firebase out and then out utility. And this is, of course, uh, again, uh, for the flow uh, source code. So that that's why we need to exclude it from compilation. And then we're combining the two to get the storage path.
And the other thing that we need to actually get is the file as bytes. And we're getting the file as bytes by calling the API code. And the API code, the parameter of the API code is called the URL. Uh, so that's why we have two URLs because this is the parameter of the API code and this is the parameter of our custom code. So this one is coming from here and this one is coming from the API code which is coming from over here. So you can actually name it something else if you if you are mixed up in, if you're mixing uh, what is which one is which. Uh, but yeah, on the right side it's coming from here. On the left side it's coming from here. API calls. Great. And now we need to actually get the data as bytes, and we can do that by uh, file as bytes and then response, and then. Uh, I'll just uh, place body bytes, and this will return uh, the bytes as uh, you as uh, bytes. And then we can. The final thing that we're doing is actually uh, uploading uh, the data, which are uh, by using this backend uh, Firebase storage storage. So we are uploading the data, and then we're uploading to this path, and then we're using the bytes that were generated. And here we have the uh, download URL. So if you want to get a download URL, you can have an app state. So it could be FF app state. I haven't included that, uh, but I can do it just right now. Uh, my code analyzer for some reason, uh, for some reason it's not working right now, uh, but I think it was file path. And then you can use the download uh, your array. Uh, and then I think it was file path. Let me save that and go to API code. So it's file path. You can see it over here. This is my app state. And then uh, you can save it over here in the app state. And then you can, of course, use it all across your application. Great. Uh, and I think that's it. But before you go, so thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, much appreciated. If you really like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to use the code in the video, you can visit this page, uh, which I set up uh, to actually get the code from. Uh, and there is actually a great video I did over here, uh, the top left, how to use this page. And you can press it, of course and then see how you can use this page. It's, uh, I set it up actually for the 2000 subscribers. So thank you very much uh, for subscribing to the channel. And I hope this video was uh, helpful. So thank you very much again uh, and have a great day. So take care, bye-bye.